So, um, how's it going, dear? Lovely. Splendid. Splendid. Is that a sarcastic splendid? The house looked all right when we woke up this morning. And now, look at it. Now I will take full responsibility for this error. Hi, I'm Ray from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel and a hybrid room makeover vlog. So what is a hybrid room? Well, it's just a dual purpose room. Let me explain a little bit. If you saw one of my recent vlogs where I was rather emotional moving my eldest to university, you will have heard me talk in that vlog or perhaps previous ones that until he moved out, he didn't want us fussing in his room, even though there's some things that needed doing in there, the lights needed doing, some bits of like filling and decorating and things needed doing. But anyway, now he has moved out, still not gonna dwell on that because I'm feeling a bit emotional, but now that he has moved out, I want to make it a space that he can come home to and use as his bedroom when he's home. But equally, our house isn't big enough to have a room that is only used for a few days or weeks a year depending on how much he comes home. So I want to make it into a hybrid space. So while he is in university, I want it to be a second sitting room or a playroom for the children. And when he's home, actually he can use it as a hybrid space himself. So he can use it as a sitting room in the day because I have ordered a sofa bed. So you can use it as a sitting room in the day and then a bedroom in the night. So this is a room as it was after all his things were taken out and moved to uni. We have emptied out the room this morning and my husband is at the moment sorting out the lights. He marked out the lights a few days ago where he wants to put them and now he is doing some sort of drilling and moving wires to get to the holes and all that kind of thing. So should we see what he's up to? So, um, how's it going, dear? Lovely. Splendid. Splendid. Is that a sarcastic splendid? Yeah. Oh. Uh, if you watched our recent home mini living room makeover type vlog, you'll know that um, my dear husband, also known as Daddy of Four, um, did the same dad. thing. Or super, super dad. dad. Whatever he wants to call himself. Um, he did actually change the light fittings for spots in the lounge as well. Now I will take full responsibility for this error. If you watched our whole home renovation series, you'll know that we bought this place and um, my darling husband did absolutely gut it, super dad, uh, gut it and renovate it. Every single corner, wasn't it? Everything the light touches yeah. was swapped. Except for the spotlights. Except the for the spotlights because, and this is what's back to my fault, he said, do you want spotlights in the lounge or in Dylan's room? And I said, no, 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 we won't need that. We want just nice sort of dim ambient lighting but then I forgot that at four o'clock in the winter it's dark and we want it to pretend it's not dark and pretend it's all daytime so for that purpose we want nice bright lighting so the spots are going in yes it would have been easier to do it in the first place when the place was a building site so sorry that's all oh, I can say oh yes sorry <laughs> so um do you want to talk the good three pe the good people through what you're doing uh no I'm busy no you're busy yeah. right but you know narrate oh. what you're doing I am fitting spotlights. Yeah, but how are you doing that? Again, 
Yeah. Do you want spotlights in this room? No, <laughs> we don't want spotlights in the room. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, so, so we we've, do. we've been over this. So, so been... two and a half years ago, I cut the hatch here in the ceiling and we put insulation in. Right. Like lots of it. Okay. Why did you do that? To keep the room, room warm. Okay. It's a, it's a pitched roof on top of here. Okay. And it needed insulation. So we did that. Right. And today now we decided we we're going to put spots in. So all the insulation is in the way. Ah. Is so, that the stuff that Dylan calls the devil's wall? That's the stuff. Yes, it is. Devil's wall. <laughs> that's why I mentioned. Oh. Um, I mean, hardly touched it. But yeah. Anyway, that's another story. Okay. So that's um, you having to drill holes and like feed cables, cables through holes and after. And the joists are running that way. Right. So. These, getting that to there isn't too bad. Okay. But getting it over there, I've got to go over two joists. Oh. And a load of rock will. And it's taken me about half an hour to do this run. Oh. And as you'll see earlier on in the video, I did that run, gave you the thumbs up, and then pulled it through and the cable came off. So I can do it again. <laughs> so it's oh, like, no. It's yeah. not always as straightforward as you might hope, is it? So um, this room's starting to be echoey now because obviously the bed is gone. Um, We've got a, less than oh, a week, oh, haven't oh, we? One, one thing. What, one thing what? Hang on. One Before thing. I talk about my less than a week. Don't yes. try the electrics at home. Right. Use a qualified electrician. Okay. No, Sensible I'm advice. Only, oh. I'm only qualified to do basic electrical, so changing sockets and lights and stuff. Right. Okay, we're all right, we're there. I mean, you're more than capable. But more than capable. More than but capable. It's, it's all about legislation. And oh, stuff, and certification so, yeah. and things. Yeah. Thank you for that disclaimer, darling. Don't try okay. this at home, kids. Just don't anyway, any DIY home you no. really good at it, really. Because no, because actually a lot of what you do for a living is fix at other people's botched problems, isn't that it? That is correct. You go in, he normally comes in with stories like, well, I went into this guy's home and I was like, what have you done in here? And then I had to fix it all. Oh, my, oh my heck, we had a brand new kitchen mm. last year and it's fallen, literally fallen apart. Because it wasn't put in properly. Yeah. Yeah, don't so. scrimp on insulation. Installation, not insulation. Don't probably don't yeah. scrimp on it either. Anyway, what was I saying? Today is Sunday, I believe. Next Saturday, we are having the sofa bed delivered. So no pressure, but it all needs to be finished before then. Otherwise, we're going to get muck on the new sofa bed, which we don't want. So the lights need to go in, and then I need to give this place a darn good clean. And we're going to sort out the boxes and things for the children's toys that they can access. I thought we'd bring perhaps play tables in here. I thought we'd have a little art station because the girls were like really into sort of, well, drawing generally. Um, and I just want to give it a really, really good sort out. And then it can be the children's playroom most of the time and then Dylan's room when he's home. I think I'm quite excited for it because this room's always felt like a funny shape. It's kind of made me think though, maybe we should have had a sofa bed years ago. That would have actually been the answer. really nicely in here we've got some spots we've also got some big holes in the ceiling <laughs> which were needed for threading wires through is that right and now need filling yes. but we're yes. quite confident that it's all going to look nice because we had the same sort of machine gun at the ceiling effect in the living room and that's looking lovely now so daddy four is just making little disc replacement things to stick in the hole. And then he's going to paint over them over and over. He is, over and over with filler. Bella's been vacuuming for us. Very, very helpful. Sarah's helping too, are you not? Sarah's telling Bella where to vacuum. Excellent managerial role there. Um, so the next job, I think, in here, um, the toy kitchen, we did debate this, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, that's been in the living room. You guys were quite liking here. Yeah. 
So, are we, we gonna, gonna have to move that tomorrow or today? I think oh, Daddy's gonna do it now. So I think the plan now? is, Ooh. this TV we're feeling is a bit high up. So the plan is to move um, this pallet yeah, yeah, across, yeah. drop the TV down, and then the toy kitchen can go in between the two pallets. So you can have all the toy kitchen in here, nice, which you nice love. Nice and then, <laughs> you guys keep vacuuming. Then the toy kitchen, I will, um, I'll come in here away from the drilling noise. So then the toy kitchen, which is currently in here, can go into the playroom. And then the fireplace thingy that is currently over here can go over here. That is the plan. And then when it comes to Christmas, we can have the Christmas tree here. Then we can just move the little sofa across slightly like we did in previous years and we'll have plenty of space for the Christmas tree. Well, it's looking rather good in here, dear. Are well, you pleased with it? I am. Glad you think so. Yes, it's looking really good. It feels really spacious. I know we haven't brought furniture in here yet, but still, I'm confident even with the sofa bed, it's still gonna feel nice and spacious for the children to play. Obviously, everything needs a really good clean because everything is dusty, partly because, um, you know, drilling and partly because teenagers don't like cleaning. <laughs> We're gonna give it all a really good scrub before bringing some things in. It is all coming together so nicely and I'm so, so pleased. It's really echoey because obviously there's no furniture, um, but the floor is now clean. It's Sunday today and the new sofa isn't due till next Saturday. So I think what I'm gonna do is go and borrow the little sofa from the corner of the dining room. I don't wanna give it up permanently, but it will do until next weekend. I can kind of put it as a placeholder until the actual sofa comes, we can start using the room. I think I'll bring a little play table in here as well. 
probably most of the toys and boxes and things I'm just gonna have to do tomorrow but if I can bring a little bit of furniture in here then the children can maybe have a little play before bedtime. <laughs> have got the children up to bed they had just a little bit of a chillax watched a bit of tv in here i've swapped another couple of things around i think there's going to be a lot more trial and error before this room is done and also there's just a lot more to do generally but i thought i'd show you what we've done so far today so this is the room as it stands at the moment so this little sofa is a placeholder for the sofa bed that I have ordered from Next. It's not loads and loads wider than this. It folds out into a single bed. It's a snuggle seat sized. So it'll be a little bit bigger than that, but not loads. So you can kind of use your imagination. Now I did have the seat originally over there and then I was planning to put the tent over here, but I have tried it this way round just to see what we think. Now this tent is literally battered and ready for the bin. So I have ordered a replacement just because the children love it so, 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 so much. The girls more than William, to be honest. William doesn't really bother with it. Um, so I've ordered a replacement. Hopefully that'll be here in the next few days and I can show you what I've ordered. So all of these boxes, I've got new grey and white ones. So I've got grey like this and plain white to swap them all around so that just the grey and white and they kind of match the same way as they do in the living room. I've tucked the printer up here out of the way so at least when you come in through the front door, see that's our front door, when you come in through the front door the first thing you don't see is the printer. The first thing you do see will either be the new tent which is more like a teepee type thing that I've ordered so either that or it'll be the sofa so I guess when both arrive I can swap them around and play with them. All these need the white and grey boxes. Toys will be hidden within those. I've brought the toy castle in from the living room with all the little bits. I can bring those down to the floor for the children to play with, but they can be stored in here. This castle was in Zara's bedroom. This Tracy Island was in William's bedroom. And this Elsa castle was in Zara's bedroom. They were all things they had for their birthdays previous years. So now they can all live in the playroom so they can all be brought down and played with together and free up a bit more space in their bedrooms. So I've got the, brought the little play table in here that was, I mean, sometimes it's been the lounge, sometimes the dining room, but then they can use the little caddy, which I've tucked down here. Um, and I'm gonna organize some paper and supplies and things. Again, all of this needs organizing, but stay tuned for that. So the stationery and stuff, um, they can use this for drawing. So the general consensus is I'm the room will be sort of like this. I'm thinking, I mean, I could put the, the tent here, but I'm thinking I kind of like the drawing here under the window next to the stationery caddy little slot. This is our seasonal tree, which I tend to take into the lounge normally and decorate with Halloween stuff or Christmas stuff or whatever. Um, so maybe we'll still do that. I don't know. Maybe it'll live in here. Not sure. But this is it so far. We've got the TV fixed to the wall that has been dropped a little bit so it's easier to watch. The children were enjoying sitting over here to watch TV, but then quite frankly, they would probably sit in the tent to watch TV as well. We've got the little play kitchen, which they filled with their little baskets of food. So, so far, 
I'm pretty pleased. Not sure which way I'm gonna end up putting it round, to be honest. Whether it'll stay this way or that way, or whether I'll swap it round, not sure yet. But I don't have to decide any of that for tonight. Do you know what? Let's go and have a look. Oh, actually, forgot to show you these. <laughs> the LED lights, um, these were already in here for when it was just my teenager's bedroom. But don't they look cool? The children have got LED lights, they've all got LED lights in their bedrooms for the evenings and it is kind of nice moody lighting for watching tv when it's late so a few of these cushions will be donated into the playroom i have moved the fire to this corner over here now the flowers that were on top of it now feel a bit bunched under there so i don't know whether i should put those on maybe some sort of table thing in the corner so the flowers kind of pop up behind there not sure would that work also this no longer needs to be too deep this was always just plonked here could maybe that go over there and then the fire go back over there is that a possibility not sure all i know is for tonight that'll do i think it'll do now we're gonna have to start again with this organizing malarkey tomorrow because i am Shatter. It is sorting time. First job is to sort out boxes. So we've got a lot of these boxes around the house, as you know. They're, I think they're three pounds in Ikea. Some of them are looking a little more battered than others. So when my auntie was last in Ikea, she picked up some replacement ones for me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the new boxes kind of front and center. So I thought I'd replace the new boxes into this unit because that's the one you're gonna be able to see from the front door when you first walk into our house. The front four boxes in the living room can be nice and crispy and new. And maybe these uh, book bag boxes by the front door because they are looking a little battered too because they're two and a half years old now. And these, you know, these boxes last pretty well, but the ones that get really heavy usage um, and are a little more battered than the others need replacing from time to time so Bella my darling are you going to help me yeah are you oh good you like organizing don't you sweetheart? yeah right okay so while I was um, doing some laundry and things daddy and the girls did all of these boxes assembled them for me daddy and William actually. oh daddy and William we were coloring you were coloring oh that, that's helpful too <laughs> so we're gonna sort we're gonna sort the um the empty boxes into the slots um that they're gonna go into and then we'll decant various toys and things into them and get sorted. So it turns out I've got plenty of spare grey boxes, not as many of the white, so that's fine. What I'm going to do is make sure that the neatest boxes are in the most visible spots and then put some of the slightly older boxes behind in the lounge or perhaps behind this door or in that corner. They could be slightly older boxes um, and just keep the crispier ones in the most direct line of sight. So all the boxes are in and empty. Now what I'm gonna do is decant things from one box to another. So rather than just sliding boxes directly in, I'm gonna swap things over and then hopefully everything going into the boxes in the playroom will be sorted of some shape.
those of you who've seen my channel before know that every organization project I take on, I inevitably reach a stage where I'm like, why did I start this? What have I done? How am I gonna get through it? And I'm here to tell you that that's where I am right now. The playroom is now looking like an absolute tip, like an actual tip because I'm in the process of sorting everything out, but also the children are helping by playing with all the things. And then if we go out into the hall, there are boxes that have been brought down from upstairs. There are boxes here that have been brought down from upstairs because I'm trying to swap things around. Stuff in my office, I've been taking boxes from out there. And in the lounge, boxes everywhere because I'm swapping it all around. So hopefully by the end of the day, I will have boxes like this that are ready to go, that have just, you know, like seen better days, that are folded and crumpled and have been abused. Fresh, clean boxes, where we can see them the most, and then sorted things. So for example, this is a box I'm gonna put at the back of the Calyx, and it's like bits I've been buying and collecting for Halloween. They've just been left out in my office, which I don't wanna see those, because it's not Halloween yet, we're not quite ready to decorate, not far off. Um, but not quite ready to decorate for Halloween and I haven't got anywhere to put them. So I've got a little box. For now, my husband quite likes the idea of leaving this Calyx too deep because it keeps the children away from the TV and stops them putting fingerprints on it, which is a very good point. They do actually play on this surface, although I guess they'll be playing in the playroom a bit more. So for the moment, I think that we will leave it like that. The keen-eyed among you may notice, this wasn't in the vlog because he did this while I was taking my elders to uni, the TV has been kind of budged over and sort of recentered because it was sort of a bit wonky next to the calyx following the room rearranging. So my husband's budged it over a little bit and I think it does look better. It looks a lot better. So although this calyx, double calyx situation isn't perfect, It'll do for now, it's not offending me. Do you know what is offending me though? Just all the boxes everywhere and I, I haven't got a choice now, I've got to sort it all because I've made such a mess. The house looked all right when we woke up this morning. And now, look at it. We're just sorting out some puzzles and uh, board games to go into a box in the living room. Now, one of the problems we often find with puzzles and board games and things is the boxes, the packaging they come in, like this one, for example, the, the plastic bit came off the front and all the bits were falling out. So what I often do, and you will have seen me use these a lot um, through the speedy bits of this video, is decant into these mesh bags, which are actually food bags. They're also good for washing, like separating delicates or socks or whatever in your laundry. So many uses for these bags. But anyway, you can de decant um, puzzles into them or puzzle pieces, because quite often the puzzle boxes would be bigger than the puzzles need to be, but the boxes are bigger than they need to be. Or you find a hat if you go. <laughs> um, and they're good for board games and keeping all the bits together too. I will link those as always down below along with everything else I mentioned at some point during this video. I've picked the children up from school, Gillies. Something has arrived. Should we see what it is? Yeah! Should we have a look? Yeah. We're going to use the slice thingy to unbox. These things are fantastic, they haven't got one. They're bad. Okay. 
So this looks lovely. I'm really pleased with the colour. Because obviously we've got like a pink and grey and white theme throughout the house. However, <laughs> the, the, the instructions are, I think, vague is the best the best way to put it. So connect two wooden poles to, to, with connect two wooden poles with connected together. Connect one pole with hole in it to another pole without holes. Which is the hole for the top, for the bottom. There are these connector thingies. Once we start it out, it'll be easy peasy, I'm sure. Yeah, those are Bella. Those are like rubber stoppers to stop it from, you know, falling. sliding, falling. Um, we just need to figure out the holes at the top, the holes at the bottom. I'm assuming the holes are at the top to thread together, to hold the, the top bit together. But how do you thread those I think that's the top, that's the middle, that's the bottom. That's what I yeah. think. Let's see if I'm right. It's Sofa Delivery Day, but I've just remembered that we had these floating shelves in the cupboard that we bought pretty much when we were doing the house up initially and we haven't done anything with them. So I thought they could go up on this wall. That would be cool, but now we're trying to debate which shape they should go in. I don't think they should be in a step. You think they should be in a step. I think they should be more like random dotted. They should be like this. Like this. Equal distance there, and then the next one there, and then the next one here. Like I don't know about that. I think more like da da da, da da da, not what? da da da. Just randomly. Like. Well, there, there, and there. But I they think. could be like equal. Well, I was thinking more like high, medium, low. Be lucky if you can get them on the wall straight. Why? Well, look at the brackets. They're just like, they're just I, little I'm not, I'm not, I, think should, I think you should ask your customers, your, your customers. viewers or whatever mm -hmm. they are. Hi guys, I think you should ask everyone, has anyone ever managed to get these on the wall, flat, square, straight, plumb? Well, surely, otherwise they wouldn't sell them. But I don't think other people use words like plum. I just don't think. Okay, do you have these shelves, these sh floating bet, shelves from I, Ikea? in right. your house and how easy are they to put up all right i'm not saying comments. nobody's going to get them flat and thing but how much how much swearing <laughs> that's how a much, different story how much swearing that is a different story how long has it taken someone to put one of these up and get it right and does think, I, do things roll off it because i don't think well then overload it as well and it's sort of well so i'm not planning to get it, it, decorative get it, shelves you get it lovely and flat like that and lovely and level and everything and all of a sudden some someone puts too much on it and it's like that forever then because yeah. I've been to houses where I've seen stuff like this all over the shop. I've had to sort it out. And okay. these, You're not convinced. Know. We don't have to put well, them up, but out, equally I can't take them back to Ikea now because you just unboxed it. It's like how well, you couldn't anyway because we've had them for two and a half years. <laughs> but it's like, this is why I haven't put them up because <laughs> they, you don't like I, know, them. I know they're going to be a nightmare. We had floating shelves in the last house. Yeah, but they were, they were different. They were a bracket on the wall. With oh, with pole, pokey outy po things. Po yeah, pole sticking out. You just slide it on. So you get the you get the bracket in. 
right. and everything. And then you slide your shelf onto it. The, so the that would be a better shelf. I bought the wrong shelf. This is no, yeah. Well, this is about. This is all about how far the head sticks out from the wall. Okay. So and, that... you, and then when, when it's when it's sticking out from the wall, you've got to, It's got to be loose enough to bang that down onto the screws, mm. which is probably going to take paint off. Yeah. If it's, if it's slightly too tight and if it's slightly too loose, it's going to drop down like that. And then um, if you come along and put something slightly too heavy on, it's going to drop down like that anyway. Because it's just not the way screws are meant to work. No. Well, thank you for that lesson in screws. Should we try putting it on the wall anyway? So, Ikea, anyway? you need to up your game, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, so are we going to try it? And shall we have it da 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 like I said? No, oh, whatever, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to drill holes. Oh, no. Talk me through what's going on on the wall. <laughs> well, Did you stand over there and just throw them at the wall? No, I followed the instructions. So the instruction says, in pictorial terms, two, you need a 22.5 centimeter gabaruni, which I've done. Doesn't say anything about how far the screws need to be sticking. Hang on, so um, why are they all wonky? This is not your usual standard, dear. Are you trying to make a point of some description? They clearly got it in, clearly got it in his IKEA shelves because they've been sitting in the wardrobe for <laughs> two and a half years. Um, um, I followed the instructions. You Right, well that's the person, your first mistake. You never person, follow the instructions. The person there with a big smile is saying they need a level pencil. There's also, if measure. you're confused, Actually, you should phone IKEA. Oh, yes. There's like You're a guy right. scratching his head. Which one? Oh, Maybe. goodness sake. Apple Maybe Watch. I should them. <laughs> right, so I've got a level, I've got a pencil, I've got a tape measure. But I actually need a hammer screws plug. There's all the kit there, look. Drill, hammer screws, plug, little step ladder, and a hoover, a vacuum cleaner. To clean up the mess. So, so I've done all that. Okay, but why have all you the put them up wonky? What's the point you're trying to make here? Well, I just thought I'd do it for fun. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I might. They might actually be wonky. I'm actually. Are you actually going to finish them and do them properly? Why well, aren't you? Yeah. Because, I mean, good God. This is where the swearing bit comes in. Right. Okay. So that was just to see if I noticed, was yeah. it? So you so threw them up on the wall. Test on a Saturday. Well, like they don't work on Saturdays. Try not to. So neither do this I. This is but work. Stuff. So I've got, so. got to get it done. Got to get it done. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So you would just you threw them up uh, the wall to see if I noticed how wonky they were, and I yeah. did. Well done. I passed. You did. Now, can you please fix it so it's properly done? I'll try. Thank you, dear. Oh, now that's better. That's more like it. I did know you were winding me up. Why do you enjoy winding me up so much? <laughs> Because I can. Yeah, I think I quite like them. They are going to need its styling with, I'm not quite sure what. So far I have found one photo frame, so that can kind of, that can just go up there for now. But um, yeah, they are gonna need some actual more styling, but very, very soon we'll be decorating for Halloween. So I guess I'll just put Halloween-y stuff on them for a bit and then style them with the rest of the stuff when we've passed Christmas and Halloween and all that kind of thing with like normal, non-seasonal shelf styling. Brilliant. I can have a cup of tea. <laughs> up. Well, I've tracked our sofa delivery. It is en route and should be with us soon.
it's here, the sofa bed is here. So in a second I am gonna give you a little tour of the pretty much finished playroom. There are a few tweaks and things that I will need to do and to add, which I shall talk about as we go around the tour. But so far, I must say I'm pretty happy. Um, now I have had to think about the desk situation, as in obviously there used to be a desk in here, and when my eldest comes home from university, I was concerned perhaps he'd need a desk, and I was thinking, do we get some sort of fold away option? Do we get something that maybe pulls down from the wall? Some sort of option that can go away into the wardrobe or maybe even just like a desk. Uh, maybe you could use my table thing. Like it's like a lap tray table thing I have from Ikea that sometimes I use with my laptop um, or even work in my office. Um, but I've had a chat with him um, because obviously he's, he's in university and he's been there about a week now, hence why I want to get this done quickly. So if he wants to come home and stay, I figured he wouldn't want to come home fresh this week, but after that, um, it's all done and ready. So I, I spoke to him yesterday and asked how much work he thinks he's gonna have to do uh, in the holidays and over the breaks and things when he's actually home. And apparently, all of the work he's gonna need to do is gonna need to be on their computers, so he's not even gonna be able to work in his uni dorm he's gonna to have to go into like the block to work on their computers because he's doing computer animation and it's really specific software. So apparently this working at home thing isn't gonna be an issue when he is home. If it turns out that it is, we will have to work out some sort of desk type solution um, or he'll just have to use a desk in my office. But for now, he's told me not to bother and not to worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you a little tour. So as we now come in, from the front door, this is what we're greeted with. So my husband put up these shelves, which I'm rather pleased with. I don't know what I wanna put on them yet, but quite frankly, it'll probably be seasonal stuff. So look out for some Halloween type stuff going up there soon. Moving down to the new sofa bed. It is literally the same style and the same fabric as the ones in our living room, I figured by going for the same, if we ever wanted to just put this in the living room, for whatever reason, we had that option. So it folds out, and when it pulls out into a bed, I will just spin it around that way, like that, and open it across. So it'll make a bed shape where the bed used to be. Now this uh, teepee, which I'm not sure I've shown you in depth actually since, um, it's been up. The children have played and played with this. I'm really, really pleased with it. It's a really nice kind of substantial one. It doesn't have a floor thing with it. I've literally just got one of the Ikea rugs under there and this blanket that I found upstairs. I will link it in that blog post if I can find the link to it. But it was from a couple of years back and in Bella's room. The reason I haven't put the blanket straight on the floor is because when I do that, it just makes it really, really slippery and the children more like to slip and fall and hurt themselves. So by putting the rug underneath and that over the top. They're finding it nice and cozy and snuggly, uh, but obviously it's not too slippery either. But the main reason I like this, other than it's super substantial, is it's just far more portable than the other tent. So literally you can just kind of push the poles up to closer together. You see, you've just made it smaller. Or I could just squeeze it all away into almost nothing and put it in the cupboard. So when my eldest comes home, it can be more of a living room into a bedroom without all the tent in it and stuff. We could also take that quite easily out the garden in the summer if they want to and it won't sort of get mucky at the bottom because it's only these feet that touch the floor. So, darting around a little bit, we'll show you back around this front corner. So we've got the calyx. These are the same calyx we used to have. We used to have the printer over here. This is our tree for all seasons. So soon this will become a Halloween tree. Not sure if I'll leave it there or not. Got the children's caddy tucked down there and then art supplies in these bottom two. And then these are just all various toys. So that's one of Polly Pockets. And each box is quite sorted. This Tracy Island is Williams used to be in his bedroom. Um, we've got the Millennium Falcon that my eldest and my husband built that when I was pregnant with Will. So we've got the little Ikea play table. This has been in the dining room. It's been in the lounge and now it's in here. More toys all up here and castles up on top. The shelves, we've talked about those, it need to style those. And then over here, the toy kitchen, obviously that was in the living room. The TV was higher 
and these two calyx were sort of just either side of that pillar thingy. So as you saw earlier in the video, that calyx has moved across, the printer's now up there, and the TV has been dropped. I do need to, I'm not even gonna open those cupboards at the back, I do need to pull everything out of there and sort it, but that is for another day and another video. Now the question is, obviously this is all quite movable, I can swap this around really quite easily. So let me know in the comments, would it be better if I put the sofa chair over there and the TP there? The reason I've got it this way around is I figured the inside of the TP maybe kind of full of stuff and then from the front door which is just there at the moment seeing a chair quite neat however if you look through the front door and see a tp full of potentially a load of the children's just bits of junk then that might not be as tidy looking so so do i leave the chair here or do i swap the tp and the chair over or even that chair would technically fit there and then I could put the table there, but then you wouldn't be able to see the TV from the chair if I put the chair under the window. So that is an option, but maybe a better option would be to put the TP under the window and the play table over there. And then they could use the play table as like a kitchen, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, I've got options in here and I can definitely play around with it and I absolutely will. So absolutely let me know if you've got any ideas down in the comments. I know the way we have our living room round right now, the idea initially came from one of you guys who wrote in the comments and that's how we kind of came to how we've got it right now. And I, although there are some tweaks I still wanna make in the living room, I'm really happy with how we've got it and all the space and everything. If you haven't yet seen the living room makeover vlog, you can catch that down here or you can watch my latest video up here. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all those YouTube -y things and make sure you click whichever video takes your fancy. See you soon guys. Bye.